Hello everyone. A very very good morning to all of you. Am I live? Am I visible to you? Give me a minute to confirm if I'm clearly visible or audible. I will start the session ahead. You have to give me a minute to see whether I'm live. Yes or no? Give me a minute. Yes, I hope it's working. Can you give me a thumbs up in the chat box? Okay, yes, it's working. So I welcome you all for today's session. A very, very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here and today I am here to take a very important topic from virology you must say. I am going to teach you one of the important DNA virus. Yesterday we have seen the classification of the DNA and RNA viruses, right? So today I am going to teach you a very important DNA virus. One of the DNA virus that is pox virus, the pox viridae family. One of the member of this family is the already eradicated there is no case of smallpox since last many years 1985 onwards we don't have it but it's a very important uh, virus from the exam point of view many mcqs come as well as many long and short question comes in your university exam from this topic so let me start without wasting any further time yesterday we have seen we have six dna viruses right or wrong so I have told you a mnemonic to learn that. The mnemonic is double H A triple P. You may be knowing those who have watched my yesterday's lecture, they know it. So double H is herpes and hepadna. A is adenovirus. P is parvovirus. Another P is papovirus. And the last one is the pox virus. So there are three P. Among the three P, one is smallest, one is largest. We have seen the parvo is the smallest DNA virus and pox is the largest DNA virus. So today we are going to study pox virus. Pox virus family that is variola as a member of this family. I will tell you the complete classification. By the way, these are the names of the families. They have multiple members inside them. These are the names of the families. Can I proceed? That was about the DNA viruses. If we revise RNA viruses, RNA viruses have 15 families, not 6. They have 15 families. We have seen a mnemonic yesterday for learning the name of the RNA virus families. The mnemonic was A, B, C, D, F, O, R for tweet per hour, TPH. So we already know the full form. Yesterday we have discussed it. So I'm not saying it again. So we have seen DNA viruses are six family having multiple members. RNA viruses have 15 families having multiple members. So today we are going to study the first DNA virus in your syllabus. We have to study all the viruses, the DNA also, RNA also. But I'm starting the detailed study of first DNA virus that is pox virus. Can you give me a thumbs up in the chat box? Let me see if your chat is visible or not. Anyone from the audience? Okay. So, uh, among the DNA we have seen which is the smallest and which is lar largest. Both are P and P. One P is parvo, smallest. One P is pox, that is the largest. Right. Now, among the RNA also, the smallest and largest are both P. Both P. So, among the DNA, we have already seen the smallest is parvo, largest is pox. Among the RNA, smallest is picorna and largest is paramexo. So it's all about P. It's very confusing. You can see the six DNA viruses. I have told you the mnemonic HHAPPP, double H A triple P. You can see which is the smallest, that is parvo. You can see which is the largest, that is pox virus. Now among the six, three are enveloped, three are non-enveloped. The non-enveloped are known as naked. We can see which three are enveloped. We can see which three are non-enveloped or naked. So the naked one, learn a mnemonic. The naked one are PAP, P-A-P, PAP, P-A-P, PAP. So what PAP, so leave POX. There are three P, na? So among the three P, POX. POX is the largest one. So I had to that the largest one, you have to respect it. You have to give the respect to the largest one because it is the most elder member of this family. So there are six members, now. So it is the largest one to give envelope to that. Usko give envelope to that. Lekin bachi hoi dono pico we don't give envelope. We don't give envelope to parvo. It is the smallest. And papova. And along with that adeno. So pap don't have envelope. Right. Among the RNA there are 15 families. 15 families you know the name. Among them only 3 are naked. They don't have envelope. But the remaining 12 have envelope. Right. So the ratio is 12 is to 3. So which 3 are naked? Here the mnemonic is PCR. PCR. P is the smallest one, picorna. C is calci and R is rheovirus, that is rotavirus. Rio is the name of the rotavirus. So we have seen what we have learned, we have learned this. See everyone on the screen. After that, I am start, starting the first chapter. This is the revision of yesterday's lecture. So we have seen DNA viruses are six in number. The mnemonic is HHA triple P. You know the full form. Among them, we divide the six in threes to three. Three are enveloped and three are non-enveloped. I guess you can see. 
I guess you all can see. The three which are non-enveloped, the mnemonic is POP. The remaining are enveloped. Don't learn the enveloped. Learn the non-enveloped that is known as NACID. Okay. Coming on the RNA, we have seen RNA viruses are 15 in number. They are 15 in number. The mnemonic is A, B, C, D. There are two C. F, O, R and uh, PTH. PTH or TPH. Whatever you say. So, this is the mnemonic. If you count, total 15 families are there. Now, among them, how many are enveloped? How many are non-enveloped? So, ratio is 12 is to 3. Right. So, here the ratio was 3 is to 3. And here the ratio is 12 is to 3. So, which 3 are non-enveloped? Learn the non-enveloped one or naked one. The mnemonic is PCR. The mnemonic is PCR. Here the mnemonic was PAP, PAP. Here it is PCR. So, always learn the naked one. The naked DNA RNA viruses and the naked RNA viruses. Don't learn the enveloped one. The remaining one are already enveloped. That is common sense, I guess. You got my point? So, this is how you have to learn the classification. This is the classification. Now, among DNA, which is largest, which is smallest? Among RNA, which is largest, which is smallest? Among the 15, among the 6. You know the answers? Yes. So, among DNA, can anyone tell? Largest or smallest? Yes. Largest is Pox and smallest is Parvo. Right. Among the RNA, which is the largest? It is Paramixo. And the smallest is Picorna. Now, C, all are P. P, 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 P. You can imagine your MCQ in the exam. Exam mein MCQ tum imagine kar sakte ho. Ki question aega largest DNA, smallest DNA, largest RNA, smallest RNA. Jo bhi question aajaya chaaro mein se. Option to yehi chaar honge ABCD. Because examiner will try to confuse you with the P, 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 P. So, it should be crystal clear in your mind. So, ye hua tumhara classification. After this classification, the next is the symmetry. So, yesterday I told you there are three types of symmetry. Helical, icosahedral and complex. So, among the DNA, none of the DNA virus is helical. There are six DNA viruses. Only pox virus is complex and remaining five. Jo bhi remaining five baj gai. H, H, A, double P. Ye remaining five is icosahedral. None of them is helical. Yesterday, humne ye dekha hai. You got my point? So, Adikya, uh, Anilipa, Anilipsa, you got my point. Shall I proceed? So, let me start. Let me start with the first virus today. The first family, Poxviridae. So today I am going to teach you all the members of this family, Poxviridae. The most important member in the Poxviridae is going to be Variola. But I will teach you Molluscum contagiosum also. I will teach you Vaxiona, Vaxinia also. So I am going to teach you all the members of this Viridae. Okay? You can see the headings under which you have to write your answer in your university exam. If you are a second prof MBBS student and want a gold medal or distinction in your second prof exams, if the virus is coming for 5 marks. Now, so you have to write the virus under this, these headings. Now, the question can be straightforward. Ki write the uh, morphology, classification, pathogenesis, disease, treatment of the pox virus or variola virus. Aisa bhi question ho sakta hai. Or it can be a clinical question. Nowadays, it is an era of clinical questions. Theek hai? To competitive exam may be, university exam may be, long question, clinical question hota hai. So, you will get a clinical scenario ki ye, there is a small child. So, you have to pick the clues ki age dekha, symptoms dekhe, consist systems involved hai, wo sab dekhe, you will come to the diagnosis. And uspe pher sare questions honge. So, you may be knowing, but this virus is important. So, not only this virus, but all the viruses you have to describe under these headings, the headings are common. For university exam, I am talking. So, start with morphology, then draw the diagram of that particular virus. Tell me the classification of this family. It is a family, na? Family mein members kitne hai? So tell me the name of all members. Usme se human mein kitni disease karate hai aur animals mein kitni karate hai. Tell me the pathogenesis. Kaise hota hai pathogenesis? Name the disease it causes. Disease ka naam hai smallpox. Virus ka naam kya hai? Jo smallpox naam ki bimari disease karata tha in the past. Us virus ka naam hai variola. Which is a member of this family. So the concept should be crystal clear. Lab diagnosis is standard for all viruses. Ek bar padhaongi bar bar nahi. ठीक है ट्रीटमेंट एंड प्रिवेंशन प्रिवेंशन में द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज द वैक्सीन अगर उसके लिए कोई वैक्सीन अवेलेबल है तो यू हैव टू गिव मी द डिटेल ऑफ दैट वैक्सीन ठीक है आदित्य अमर बड़े आगे कैन आई प्रोसीड सो लेट मी स्टार्ट विद द मॉर्फोलॉजी मॉर्फोलॉजी सो इन द मॉर्फोलॉजी आल्सो स्टैंडर्ड फाइव थिंग्स हैव टू बी रिटर्न टेल मी द शेप टेल मी द जेनेटिक मटेरियल वेदर इट इज अ डीएनए वायरस और आरएनए व्हाटएवर इट इज डीएनए और आरएनए टेल मी इट इज सिंगल स्ट्रैंडेड और डबल स्ट्रैंडेड ठीक है टेल मी वेदर इट इज एनवेलप्ड और नॉन एनवेलप्ड ठीक है टेल मी द सिमेट्री एंड टेल मी द लोकेशन ऑफ रिप्लीकेशन इन साइड द इन साइड द सेल इन साइड द होस्ट सेल इन पांच फैक्टर्स पे यू हैव टू डिस्क्राइब द मॉर्फोलॉजी सो ऑलवेज व्हेन मॉर्फोलॉजी यू आर डिस्क्राइबिंग टेल मी फाइव थिंग्स टेल मी फाइव थिंग्स टेल मी द शेप नंबर वन यू हैव टू टेल मी द शेप 
you have to tell me the genetic material whether it is dna rna single stranded double stranded number 3 you have to tell me whether it is enveloped or naked that is non enveloped kai me aa raha hai number 4 you have to tell me the symmetry teen mein se kaun si symmetry hai is it icosahedral is it helical is it complex kaun si hai kaun si hai and the last the site of replication replication kahan hota hai iska so you know the all the answers just frame it frame it shape aapko yaad karna padega this virus is brick shape yesterday jinhone lecture attend kiya hai they may be knowing maine bataya tha this virus is brick shape see the diagram this is the diagram can you see this diagram the virus is looking like a brick hindi mein brick ko kehte hain eent eent ke jaisa hai right so it is a brick shape virus the rectangular right so brick shape it is a dna virus dna padha rahi hu na so all dna viruses are double stranded except except parvo which is single stranded so it is a double stranded dna virus theek hai it is enveloped the three non enveloped are pop usme pox nahi aata so this one is enveloped right it is having a complex symmetry rest all dna viruses have icosahedral so it is complex hai. and it replicates in the cytoplasm it replicates in the site all dna viruses replicate in the cytoplasm so that's why it also replicates in the cytoplasm everyone give me a thumbs up amar adikya have you got it um anilipsa have you got it can i proceed give me a thumbs up right so this is how you have to describe the morphology coming on the diagram so you can see the diagram in the diagram you all can see this is the nucleic acid double stranded dna inside the virus which is surrounded by capsid this one is the capsid made up of capsomer and this blue one is the envelope i'm drawing the envelope it is an enveloped virus na so i can see three things uh the genetic material which is double stranded dna surrounded by a capsid surrounded by a envelope now between the capsid and envelope i can see something i can see something between the capsid and the envelope so i can see two lateral bodies so this is the standard diagram nowadays image based questions are very very common in the exam you never know ye image tumhare exam mein aa jaye and a simple question identify the virus and you may be having four options so the hallmark to identify here is the shape the shape here is the brick shape number 1 the shape of the virus number 2 shape of the capsid the shape of the capsid is dumbbell you know dumbbell dumbbell you know what is a dumbbell so the shape of a dumbbell is like this this is a dumbbell dumbbell shape capsid number 2 and number 3 two lateral bodies on both side between the capsid and the envelope it is a typical diagram no other virus have this diagram right so looking at the diagram you must identify ma'am it is a pox viridi one of the member of pox viridi all the members of pox viridi have this have this diagram have this morphology everyone give me a thumbs up you got it i guess you got it so dumbbell kabhi mat bhulna it is the hallmark it can come in the theory question ibq come so you should be prepared for all we all know it is the largest dna virus among all the smallest one is the parvo ye largest hai largest among the dna and largest overall overall bhi largest hai so it is the largest dna virus it is the largest overall virus you got my point now tell me the classification how many pox virus you know how many pox viridi family mein kitne members aate hain so pox viridi mein 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so these are the nine members of this family you got my point the nine members among them human mein three diseases karate hain so i will i will teach you only three or four which are causing diseases in human not in other organism we will not see the details so we will start with variola the most important today the second i am going to teach you is vaccinia and third i am going to teach you is molluscum contagiosum you see they cause disease in man 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 apart from which aajkal monkey pox bahut news mein hai you may be knowing so monkey pox initially was causing disease in monkeys and squirrels but nowadays it is transmitted to humans also and in humans also it is causing the disease so monkey pox cow pox orf tana pox yaba pox ye sab animals ke pox virus hain not of human lekin basically human ka variola vaccinia and molluscum contagiosum hai so you should know the classification if any mcq is coming in your exam identify ki kaun pox viridi ko belong karta hai so you should be able to pick that member so there are nine members in this family sabka diagram ek hi hai this is the diagram right so that is about the classification so important among this family is variola which is the causative agent of smallpox smallpox is the name of the disease and the virus causing smallpox the organism is the variola right so that is the first virus second is vaccinia vaccinia is not a natural virus it is a artificial virus which we have humans have prepared from the variola to prepare the vaccine of the variola 
वेरियोला की वैक्सीन बनाने के लिए उसको लेस एंटीजेनिक बनाने के लिए वी हैव एटीन्यूएटेड द वायरस एंड द लेस एटीन्यूएटेड वायरस फॉर्म of the variola is known as vaccinia why it is known as vaccinia because it is used for producing the vaccine and third is molluscum contagiosum so i am going to teach you these three a little bit detail so let me start with the first one variola the most important the hero of today variola virus so you all may be knowing the root how does it enters in human body by inhalation it causes a disease which is known as smallpox but nowadays there is no not even single case of smallpox in the world it is already eradicated so but you can see it looks like chickenpox chickenpox abhi bhi hota hai now students get confused between chickenpox and smallpox sab yahan suno smallpox pox viridi se hota hai pox viridi ka ek member hai us member ka naam hai variola jo smallpox karata tha past mein but it doesn't cause now because it is eradicated but yeah the smallpox is caused by a pox viridi member that is variola chickenpox have a suffix pox so you will get confused ki ma'am chicken pox bhi pox viridi ka koi member karata hai no 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 it is a confusion right so looking at the suffix you may get confused chicken pox is also caused by a dna virus how many dna virus you know chalo batao dna virus ka kya classification hai double h a triple p right so one is pox virus which is this one what is the h h is herpes right so one of the member of herpes there are eight type of herpes i will teach you in detail other day i will teach you so herpes number 3 it is known as varicella zoster virus varicella zoster that causes chicken pox so my point is that small pox and chicken pox both are caused by dna virus dono ki dono dna virus hi karate hain lekin small pox is caused by a member of the pox viridi the name of that member is variola chicken pox is caused by a member of herpes family the name of that member is varicella zoster both are dna viruses but the families are different inside the family the members are different only common thing the rash is common rash looks like this small pox ka ho ya chicken pox ko dekhne mein aisa lagta hai this is rash this is rash so you have to differentiate the rash now this is a ultra super duper important question for mcqs for university exam write the differences between small pox rash and chicken pox rash so point by point i am going to tell you all the differences right before that see how does the virus enters in human body the variola virus it enters in human body via inhalation then it enters after inhalation where it will go it will go in nose it will go in trachea it will go in bronchi it will reach the lung from the lung it will go in blood it will go in lymphatics it will go in blood from the blood it is having a strong affinity for the dermal tissue for the skin it will go in the skin and form small small vesicles can you see these are small small vesicles the vesicles are known as pox p o c k s pox these small small vesicles the fluid filled vesicles i must say the fluid filled vesicles are known as pox so can i say pox virus produces pox pox virus produces pox but see the spelling difference so pox is the name of the virus and pox is the name of the vesicle which is produced by it so this is the name of virus and this is the name of the vesicle produced by it both are pronounced as pox as pox but you should appreciate the small changes you got my point so this is the line you must know so this is known as small small pox produced by pox virus theek hai aage badhenge so classical pox are produced the classical pox so this is the pathogenesis name the disease you name the disease the name of the disease is small pox so in small pox the rash begins from the mouth listen now very important point the rash begins here from the mouth and then it distribute throughout the body then it is distributed throughout the body now it is going away from the center it is going away from the center that's why this distribution is known as centrifugal centrifugal in nature fugal matlab away from the center in contrast to chicken pox it will be centripetal in nature if it is chicken pox na it will start from the periphery and come towards mouth but it is starting from the mouth and going away from the mouth towards the periphery so away from center towards the center so it is away from the center that's why the rash is centrifugal so one difference you already got the chicken pox is centripetal and the small pox is centrifugal you got my point centripetal means towards the center towards the center i am considering the center as mouth theek hai centrifugal is away from the center away from the center so currently i am teaching you small pox small pox is centrifugal which is away from the center but you have to differentiate small pox from chicken pox you got my point so the rash begins from the mouth then spread throughout the body within 24 hours number 1 number 1 dusra point all the rash 
first all will be papule then all will be pustule and then all develop finally into vesicle and then finally scar will be formed my point is that the complete body all the rash will be in the same stage for example if it is starting from pupule everyone will be papule 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 then all develop into pustule then all develop into vesicle and then all develop into scar so my point is that the rash rash is synchronous in nature that is same stage ऐसा नहीं है कि मुंह पे तो पेप्यूल है यहाँ पे पुश्यूल हो गया यहाँ पे वसाइकल हो गया नो इट अकर्स इन चिकन पॉक्स चिकन पॉक्स में जो रैश है ना डिफरेंट स्टेजेस अकर्स एट वन पॉइंट बट हियर सेम स्टेज अकर एवरीवेयर सो आइदर ऑल आर पेप्यूल Either all are pustule, all are vesicle, all are scar. But in chicken pox, it may be a small portion papule, small portion pustule, small portion vesicle, small scar. It can happen. So the other difference, what we have noticed between the two chicken pox is pleomorphic. That is papule, pustule, vesicle, scar, everything occurred together, right? But but small pox is non pleomorphic. So either one of them, one stage at one time, one stage at one time will be there. Give me a thumbs up on this point. Siddharth, you got it. Anilipsa, Amar, you got this point. So that you have to learn. So we have seen the differences till now. This next difference, chicken pox is superficial and unilocular. Can you see the two rash? This is chicken pox. This is small pox. Right? You can see the two rash. You can see the two rash. You can see the distribution also. If if I talk about the distribution, a uh, small pox start from the center and go towards the periphery. chicken pox start from the periphery and come towards the mouth look at the arrows right so small pox is centrifugal chicken pox is centripetal in nature we have seen that the second point you can see here chicken pox rash if you open one of the vesicle it is unilocular having one compartment unilocular and it is very superficial superficial but if you open one of the rash uh, in small pox if you open it Inside it will be multilocular. Multilocular means multiple compartments. इसके अंदर multiple छोटे छोटे compartments हो सकते हैं Multilocular number वन and it is deep rash, very deep rash and painful also. Right? So that the next difference you got it. So this one is superficial and unilocular. This one is deep seated and multilocular. You got my point? If you see uh, with uh, you know vigilance with this diagram, उसको ध्यान से देखो So in chicken pox around each rash, can you see the red red thing? red red thing around each rash this redness is inflammation so around each rash inflammation is present but here on the contrary in chicken pox i can only see the rash around the rash there is no redness so here inflammation is absent you got my point so you have to learn the differences here inflammation is present around each vesicle here no inflammation here present here absent can i proceed ahead tell me one one reason which is paired tell me one one reason which is paired in chicken pox which is paired in small pox listen in chicken pox pox palms and soles are paired chicken pox never occurs in at palms and soles and in small pox the axilla is all, always paired the axilla is always paired see this is diagram of small pox all the diagram so it is occurring on the palms it is occurring so that's why it is not chicken pox chicken pox kabhi bhi palms pe nahi hoga lekin small pox can occur small pox axilla mein nahi hoga axilla yahan pe dikh nahi raha axilla axilla mein it will never happen so small pox never happen in axilla and chicken pox never happen in palms and soles so tell me the reason which is paired so if it is chicken pox you can see the palms and soles are paired and if it is small pox the axilla is paired so learn the reason which is paired paired wahan pe rash nahi hoga that you have to learn chicken pox have rapid evolution the scab is formed within 7 days small pox mein the scab is formed within 14 days so that makes the difference everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point you got my point so in the world only one disease is eradicated till now the name of that disease is small pox the next in the row are these so polio measles gunia worm diphtheria gunia worm is eradicated from india but not from world i am talking globally तो ग्लोबली कौन कौन सी डिजीज आज तक रेडिकेट हुई है पूरे वर्ल्ड से तो आज तक सिर्फ एक डिजीज रेडिकेट हुई है द नेम ऑफ दैट डिजीज इज स्मॉल पॉक्स इट इज कॉज बाय वेरियोला राइट सो यू हैव टू लर्न यू हैव टू लर्न ओनली वन इज इराडिक अब गवर्नमेंट इन सबके पीछे हम लोग पढ़े हैं द हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री हमें नेक्स्ट ये सारे डिजीजेज इराडिकेट करने हैं फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड वन बाय वन बट स्मॉल पॉक्स इज इराडिकेटेड सो कैन यू टेल मी द डेट ऑन विच लास्ट केस ऑफ स्मॉल पॉक्स इज नोटेड इन इंडिया आई एम टॉकिंग इन इंडिया इंडिया में लास्ट केस कब था लास्ट केस वॉज ऑन सेवेंटीन मे नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव 
before you and me was born maybe our parents were already born there right so 1975 i'm talking about 1975 may last case tha uh, you are and me we are not vaccinated for smallpox of course we are not i am not vaccinated you are not kyunki hamare birth se pehle hi it is eradicated before our birth it is eradicated but ask your parents ask your parents and grandparents right are you vaccinated for smallpox they may be saying yes us samay isko chhota chichak kaha jata tha if you ask your parents they will tell you the history ki ha us samay bahut prevalent tha and it was a deadly disease and they all are vaccinated for the smallpox lekin after the eradication the government removed the vaccine and we are not vaccinated for that right so this was the end, last indigenous case in the india lekin baad mein import hua tha ek aur case After this, एक केस इंपोर्ट हुआ था दूसरी कंट्री से इंडिया में उसकी डेट भी सेवेंटी फाइव ही था नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव वन वीक आफ्टर तो सेवनटीन मे को लास्ट एंडोजिनस केस था ट्वेंटी फोर्थ मे को लास्ट इंपोर्टेड केस था उसके बाद तो कोई केस नहीं है ये इंडिया की कहानी दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ इंडिया राइट सो इंडिया का लास्ट एंडोजिनस केस इंडिया का लास्ट इंपोर्टेड केस द इंपोर्टेड फ्रॉम अदर कंट्री राइट सो आफ्टर दैट इंडिया वॉज डिक्लेयर फ्री ऑफ स्मॉल पॉक्स इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन टू ईयर्स आफ्टर दैट उसके टू इयर्स के बाद द इंडिया वॉज फ्री ऑफ द स्मॉल पॉक्स बट नॉट द वर्ल्ड इंडिया इज फ्री नॉट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द वर्ल्ड ग्लोबली सो ग्लोबली लास्ट केस कौन सा था कब था इट इज इन 1977 व्हेन इंडिया वॉज डिक्लेयर फ्री इन द वर्ल्ड आल्सो इट वॉज द लास्ट केस इन 1977 इन द सोमेलिया कंट्री इट वॉज द लास्ट केस बट सम लैब एक्सीडेंट हैपन आफ्टर दैट The virus is present in the laboratory now. So lab accident ki wajah se some technician may be having it. So in 1978 last case tha. Or world is declared free on 8th May. If you don't want to learn all the dates now, learn last one. 8th May 1980. You can't forget that date. 8th May 1980. The world was declared. The world, not India only. The world is declared free of smallpox. And after that, none, even single case. Till 2022, not even single case have appeared, right? So smallpox is completely virus is destroyed from the environment. There is no single virus in the environment. That's why it is not causing disease anywhere in the world. But, but the virus is present in this laboratory in US, in the Rus Russian Federation laboratories. The virus is still present. So you never know any time the lab accident can happen again and virus can again enter the environment. अभी तो एनवायरमेंट में नहीं है वायरस इसलिए एक भी केस नहीं है लेकिन लेबोरेटरीज में अभी भी प्रेजेंट है है ना तो लेबोरेटरीज में इट इज स्टिल प्रेजेंट फॉर द स्टडीज देर इज नो ट्रीटमेंट गिव द सपोर्टिव ट्रीटमेंट इफ द चाइल्ड इज हैविंग पेन गिव अनाल्जेसिक गिव एनसेट्स एंड फॉर प्रिवेंशन वैक्सीन आर अवेलेबल एट दैट टाइम बट नॉट नाउ इट इज अभी नहीं है वैक्सीन क्योंकि द वायरस इज रेडिकेटेड फ्रॉम द एनवायरमेंट एटलीस्ट ठीक है गिव मी अम्स अप यू गॉट इट कैन आई प्रोसीड द नेक्स्ट वायरस इज द वैक्सीनिया वायरस Vaccinia virus. It is not a real virus. Now natural virus. It is an artificial virus. Humans have produced this virus from the variola only by changing one antigen. So if we change one antigen in variola, it converted into vaccinia, and this is non-pathogenic. It is non-pathogenic. It is used for vaccination. So we converted variola into vaccinia, right? By changing one antigen. By doing so, by doing so, we are making it less pathogenic. less pathogenic but more immunogenic so that we can use this virus for producing vaccine so that's all about it you got my point so variola and vaccinia the next virus i'm going to teach you is the molluscum contagiosum virus molluscum contagiosum virus the next virus the only virus which cannot be grown in the egg it cannot be grown in the egg it causes a disease known as molluscum contagiosum disease isme bhi rash hota hai isme bhi rash yahan ke rash ki khaas baat kya hai Can you tell me it is a typical IBQ? I'm sorry, it is a typical IBQ which is already asked in your exam, one of the previous year question paper. Can you see the rash? Can you tell me speciality of this rash? Molluscum contagiosum rash. In the center there is a depression. In the center there is a depression in the rash. Can you appreciate it? So that can you appreciate this depression? Can you appreciate true believer? Anilipsa, Amar, can you appreciate this depression? Say yes, yes. This is known as umbilicated, umbilicated rash because it is having a depression at the center. It is known as umbilicated nodules. Very, very, very important. Uh, IPQ, MCQ, you must say, right? So it is typically umbilicated nodule. That is molluscum contagiosum. Okay. So we have studied the three viruses: the variola, the vaccinia, the molluscum contagiosum. How to do the lab diagnosis? What will be the specimen? स्पेसिमन क्या लोगे लैब डायग्नोसिस के लिए वॉट स्पेसिमन विल यू टेक द स्पेसिमन इज द वेसिकुलर फ्लूड टेक द फ्लूड आउट इन अरेंज फ्रॉम द वसाइकल्स वेदर इट इज स्मॉल पॉक्स और वेदर इट इज मोलस्कम कंटेजियोसम 
After that, do two things of this vesicular fluid. Directly make a slide and do the microscopy. In the microscopy, you can't see. You do the light microscopy. In the light microscopy also, yesterday I told you viruses are not seen. But the inclusion bodies of the viruses are seen. What are inclusion bodies? Does anyone know? So, this is a host cell. Can you see? This is a host cell. So, virus enters inside the host cell, the human cell and replicate inside it. Replicate and then come out. So, when the virus is inside the host cell, virus is not visible. But the parts of the virus, the parts of the replicating virus is seen as inclusion bodies. So, whenever you take the uh, vesicular fluid out, you will find the inclusion bodies inside that. You will find the inclusion bodies. So, in Variola, the name of the inclusion bodies is Pastion body. In Vaccinia, the name of the body is Guineri body. And Molluscum contagiosum, the name of the inclusion body is Henderson-Peterson. That is the name of the scientist who has discovered these bodies. So, it's very, very, very important MCQs. And one is foul pox, which is not a human disease. In that, the name of the inclusion bodies is Bollinger. So, you have to learn the name of the bodies. Can you see here? Okay, let me show you. If you can zoom out and see, these are the cells. Inside the cells, some pink colored dot-like structures are seen. That is known as inclusion body. Guinnery bodies in vaccinia. You got my point. That is the first way of diagnosis. Do microscopy and see inclusion bodies. You should know the name of various inclusion bodies in variola, in vaccinia and molluscum contagiosum. Right. The next way of diagnosing is ag. Which ag? Murgi ka anda. Hans ag. So take a hands ag and inoculate the virus inside that. So in the ag, there are four layers. Outer to inner. Inside the ag, you may be knowing that four layers are there. The outermost is chorioallantoic membrane, CAM. The second is the amniotic. The third is the allantoic. The fourth is the yolk sac. You can see the four syringe. See the tip of the syringe. We are taking the specimen in the syringe and inoculating in the four layers. Not in all four layers. Here we have to inoculate in the outermost layer. That is chorioallantoic membrane. So take the fluid here, the vesicular fluid in a syringe and inoculate in the outermost layer. Inoculate it here in the outermost layer right and after that keep this egg for next 48 hours 22 to 48 hours for inoculation so if the virus is present in this fluid it will get replicated in this chorioallantoic membrane after 48 hours hatch the egg egg ko for do hatch kar do hatch the egg take the membrane out take the membrane out if the fluid contains the vesicle it will form small small lesions on the membrane can you see these small small lesions Small, small lesions on the, this is the membrane. This is the chorioallantoic membrane which we have taken out of the egg after hatching the egg. So, egg lo, usme inoculate karo, usko grow hone do, 40 hours ke baad usko hatch karo, membrane ko bahar nikal lo, on the membrane see the lesions, see the lesions. So, if these lesions, these lesions are known as pox. So, count the number of the pox. If the pox are present, the diagnosis is confirmed. This is known as egg inoculation. Only molluscum contagiosum cannot be grown on egg. It cannot be grown. But remaining all pox virus can be grown. So that's all about the pox viridae family. Do you have any doubt in this? Does anyone have any doubt? So true believers, Siddharth, Amar, Anilipsa, others, anyone having any doubt? Otherwise, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up. So you have to answer a few questions if you got it. Right? Which are already PYQ asked in one of the exam, either NEET, PG, FMG, NICT, one of the exam. So can you tell me the brick-shaped virus? The brick shaped virus just now i told you what is the answer analipsa what is the answer true true believer siddharth amar batao kya answer hai? what is the answer here so brick shaped virus of course the brick shaped virus is pox viridi the complete pox viridi is brick shape so pox viridi ka member kon hai in charo mein se in charo mein se so students get confused ki pox viridi hai to chicken pox ki small pox so it is small pox chicken pox is a misnomer you can say the word misnomer because its suffix is pox, hai, lekin it is not a pox virus. It is not a pox virus. It is herpes virus. Chicken pox ke suffix is pox, it looks that this is a pox viridi member. Hai. But no, it is, it is not belonging to pox family. This pox family is not in the pox family. Right, it has changed its surname. It has changed its surname and it looks like it is a pox member. But it is not a pox member, it is a herpes member. Hai. Yes, you all are right. Siddharth, Amar, True Believer. The correct answer is B. Very good. So, it is a confusing question. Don't get uh, trapped. Jo examiner ne trap bich hai. Theek hai. The next question is in front of you. Inclusion bodies of vaccinia. Naam batao. Inclusion body mujhe sabka naam batao. Vaccinia ki inclusion body. Vaccinia. Variola ki inclusion body. Today I taught you three virus. Or molluscum contagiosum ki inclusion body. Uske alawa foul pox ka bhi batao. Foul pox. 
सबकी इंक्लूजन बॉडीज का नाम बताओ वट इज द आंसर हियर अफकोर्स हियर द आंसर इज गुनेरी बॉडीज तो वैक्सीनिया में इट इज गुरनेरी बॉडीज ठीक है वॉट इज वेरियोला वेरियोला में आंसर इज पैशन बॉडीज मोलस्कम कंटिन्यूसम में हैंडरसन पीटरसन और फाउल पॉक्स में बोलिंजर यू हैव टू लर्न द नेम्स इस पे बहुत क्वेश्चन था राइट सो येस द करेक्ट आंसर हियर इज ए एंड यू ऑल आर राइट वेरी वेरी गुड द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन टेल मी द नेम ऑफ द वायरस विच कैन नॉट बी कल्टिवेटेड आइदर इन एग और टिश्यू कल्चर एक वायरस जो हम आज तक कल्टिवेट नहीं कर पाए हैं वी डोंट नो द रीजन इज इट वेरियोला की वैक्सीनिया की मोलस्कम कंटेजियसम की पॉक्स वायरस इफ यू नोटिस ऑल द फोर नेम्स आर पॉक्स विडी मेंबर फैमिली के चारों मेंबर हैं। तो आंसर यस एब्सोल्युटली राइट अमर द आंसर इज दी मोलस्कम कंटेजियसम कैन नॉट बी कल्टीवेटेड आई हैव टोल्ड यू दिस लाइन वेरी क्लियरली एंड इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन राइट सो ओनली वे ऑफ डायग्नोसिंग मोलस्कम कंटेजियसम इज हैंडरसन पीटरसन इंक्लूजन बॉडी नो अदर वे ठीक है इट कैन नॉट बी कल्टिवेटेड लास्ट क्वेश्चन कैन यू टेल मी द नेम ऑफ द वायरस विच शो अम्बलाइकेटेड नोड्यूल्स द रैश इज अम्बलाइकेटेड बाय अम्बलाइकस आई मीन अ सेंट्रल डिप्रेशन the central dimple you can say a dimple in the center central depression is there it's a very important and easy question so answer is molluscum contagiosum but you will say ma'am molluscum contagiosum is not given in the option so molluscum contagiosum is the name of the member it is a virus so tell me the family it belongs so you may be knowing ki molluscum contagiosum belongs to pox virus so go with pox virus so the question can be direct it can be indirect you got my point so that's all about this family the pox viridi family you got my point so that's all about it still if you have any doubt you are free to ask your doubt on my personal contact number it's 9833032948 so text me either on whatsapp or telegram your study related doubts if you have trouble in patho pharma micro any topic if you have some difficult topic suggestion that i should schedule on youtube the free sessions in the next week upcoming week so kindly text me the name of that topic all the difficult topic from patho pharma micro i can schedule it on the youtube what is your suggestion where you find difficulty kindly text me text me either on the whatsapp text me either on the telegram don't please call me text me so and if you have any doubt in any other a uh, portion or topic don't uh, hesitate to ask me uh, maybe i am late i can answer you in a day or two due to the busy schedule but definitely i will get back to you as soon as i find the time don't forget to tell me your college name the university you are belonging and your probable exam dates final exam dates so i can help you with the schedule the important questions the important long short questions and a way strategy how to crack your university exam especially for the second prof students with distinction and you, if you are lucky you may get a gold medal also i got it you can also got you can also get it so uh, in the comment section in this session you are watching right now jo live dekh rahe ho na uske comment section pe jao in the comment you will find the link the link tree link you can click on the link and you can connect me on the whatsapp groups if you wish you can join my whatsapp group the telegram you can join me on the telegram you can join me on the instagram you can join me on the facebook so you can join me on multiple social media platforms because i am going to share many important study related content the small small one minute learning shorts are there the conceptual shorts and many mnemonics are there pyqs are there which i am going on this to share on this media so it's better to get connected on multiple ways so thank you very much i really appreciate the time you are giving me daily coming live and studying from me and uh, uh, hope to see you uh, tomorrow i don't have any session on sunday but on monday onwards again daily at the 9 am in the morning live at the rate 9 daily 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 we will take one important difficult topic and maximum students ke demand ke hisab se i will i will decide the topic thank you very much if you like the session don't forget to click on the like button share with all your friends colleagues and subscribe our youtube channel don't forget to click on the bell icon see you bye bye see you on monday morning 9 am sharp bye bye study hard all the best